Good evening and welcome to Estuary TV News. I'm Emma Lingard. Coming up in tonight's show, we find out about the life of Henry Wynne. And we'll also look back at some of the highlights of the In Bloom contest. And join me later with all the sports news. But first, it's over to Richard Morris for the news. Hello, in the headlines today, police staff in the area will be decreased and Grimsby Panto auditions are in full swing for the Christmas season. Humberside Police and Crime Commissioner Matthew Grove has pledged that the south bank of the Humber will not be disinvested, despite the force needing to save a third of their budget. Grove wasn't satisfied that Humberside Police was maximising its potential with the resources available, so is in the process of restructuring and has committed to retaining a significant amount of jobs on the South Bank. We, we have to save 30% of the budget. Um, we've got uh, over a, a, a basically a seven year period about £60 million to save out of a £180 million budget. It's a third of the budget. Um, as most of the money is spent on police officers and support staff, we have to reduce total headcount. There will be a reduction in particularly support staff all over the force area. Yes, there will be a reduction on the South Bank, but it will not bear the brunt. Um, we will be making sure that Humberside Police uh, represents and covers all communities and that there are job opportunities there spread across the area. This is not about centralising back all into Hull, far from it. They've done it again. North East Lincolnshire has once again proved its worth in the East Midlands in Bloom Awards. Grimsby, Cleethorpes, Caister and Immingham have all picked up awards in their categories. Immingham won gold and were delighted to have increased their points total, which allowed them to win their Category 2 and now await the result of the Britain in Bloom contest. Chairman of the Immingham Group, Stuart Swinburne, said next year would be bigger and better. I don't want to give too much away at the moment but obviously we're still now working on different projects and, and different schemes and themes for next year so there will be something new which the judges like to see they like to see what you're planning ahead for the following year so it's not you know just a, a summer uh, thing that we do for Immingham in Bloom we are working all year round and uh, we've not stopped right from the summer and we'll be taking out all the summer flowering next uh, week I think it is and then we're starting to plan for putting in winter pro products and uh, planning for the, the new themes for next year. The Humber LEP hosted its second relaunched forum on Friday. With the government reaffirming their commitment to devolve powers to Scotland, it is thought Wales, Northern Ireland and the English regions could be in line to follow suit and organisations like the LEP will be central to ensuring the Humber region makes the most of its position as the energy estuary and with Hull becoming the city of culture. Well, I think this area can expect the fact that in the devolution of powers to Scotland, there's going to be devolution of powers to the, to the different regions uh, of the UK. And that's whether that's the Manchester region, the Leeds region. And we want to make sure that the Hull and Humber area is one of those regions that's listened to by government so that we can move the matter forward. It's very important that the four local authorities work together. I mean, I think they're working very hard to make sure that that happens. I mean, the success of, 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 of the area is effectively going to come down to the fact that everybody works together. Businesses, local authorities, the LEP, the education facilities. We've heard a lot about education today. There's a skills gap, and we've got to find a way of making sure that that gap isn't there anymore. Local children will be taking part in the Christmas pantomime at Goonsby Auditorium. Auditions took place on Wednesday to find an appropriate dance cast. Two groups of eight children were chosen for the roles. The groups will then take turns to perform at the show. The panto this year is Jack and the Beanstalk and will be opening in December. We went along to speak to the director and leading lady who's playing Jack. Well, this year's Christmas production in Grimsby is Jack and the Beanstalk, so it's an adventure story. It's a story where the giant comes and makes a complete mess of the village of Merrydale and along comes our hero Jack and he climbs up the beanstalk and saves the day. So it's a bit of fun, it's a bit of an adventure, there's a little bit of a love story in there as well and something for all the family. You could bring your granny. Super exciting. Uh, the leading man part, however, <laughs> people sometimes misjudge and they go, 
why are you playing a man? But it's actually a um, big tradition for girls to play males in pantomimes and I'm just really lucky to have this opportunity to play Jack. So exciting. I'm based in Lincoln, so I did a lot of pantomimes uh, at the Lincoln Theatre Royal and I definitely came to Grimsby a few times to watch um, theatre and it's fab to be able to come back. That's all from me for now and we'll be back with more news soon. If you have any news for us, then please don't hesitate to contact us on Grimsby 315561 or contact us on social media. Bye for now. Last week saw Grimsby, Cleethorpes and Immingham win gold in their respective categories for the East Midlands in Bloom contest. Well, let's take a look back at some of the highlights of this year's Summer Show of Flowers. Right, well, joining me now is the Mayor of Immingham, Malcolm Cullen. Malcolm, you're, you're busy on the route. Just quickly tell us, how's it going? Well, I think it's going very well. We've got the glorious weather. And uh, obviously, I hope the judges are very impressed with all the flowers. They are looking fantastic today, they aren't are. they? They are looking very good. And how important is this for the town? Oh, enormous. Um, Immingham, a lot of people are, have probably the wrong perception of Immingham. And uh, to come and see all these flowers, uh, you know, changes people's uh, idea of what the town is like. Well, we all always enjoy coming here. We're given such a, a warm welcome by a thoroughly dedicated team of people that have been um, committed really to improving the environment of Cleethorpes for many, many years. And they've done it um, with great success. We've managed to bring the whole community together behind this idea. And when we come here, we can see the difference that it is making. Now, Dave, just explain to me, what have you done for In Bloom to help these girls this year? Well, what, what we've done is councils found some funding to, to bring in some school leavers who were finishing either the old fifth form or sixth form. Yeah. Um, we were looking initially to place three for the summer, but we had seven applicants, so we decided we'd give them all three weeks each. Right. And we're using them to do a bit of gardening, litter picking, generally take them out of the school environment and put them into a work environment and it's it's great for us. It gets a lot of the resort all on board, it brightens the resort, it brings tourism to the resort. Um, it's essential really that local people get on board which is why we have the local competition and things. But We've got a really really good reputation now, people stop us in the street and say what a fantastic job we're doing. These are people from away um, so that's, it, it, it's really essential, it brightens the place up. If people can remember what it was like before we started out on this journey in, I don't know, 2000 or thereabouts, they'll know what a great difference it's made. This weekend sees an exhibition take place in Fullertby dedicated to a man who wrote poems, essays and was also the longest serving parish clerk. We sent Dave Nunn to meet Jean Burton to find out more about the life and times of Henry Wynne. So obviously you, you were here to sort of go on about an exhibition for Henry Wynne, so just who is Henry Wynne? Well, Henry Wynne was born in the village in the early 1800s, um, January 1816, um, and he lived here for 98 years, so he saw a huge amount of changes. Um, but the thing that makes him special is the fact that I would say he was addicted to the pen. He wrote hundreds, quite literally hundreds of manuscript books most of them about Lincolnshire. Um, he goes back in time and will tell you the, the um, early history of villages and then take you right up to the present time. And he recorded it by writing essay books, letter books. He actually offered a, a letter reading and writing service to people who were illiterate. And he would record those in books. Um, he wrote poetry. His poetry is, well, I would describe it as stories in rhyme, but everything in those poems is historically accurate, so they add to the picture of Victorian life. So I think he's important because he tells the story of the ordinary person um, in the Victorian period. 
So he's obviously he wrote also he kept a lot of records of life in full of being a hundred years span, did he? Yes. Yes, he would write the he would record the really important developments in the village, but he also recorded the social activity right down to sort of jokes and anecdotes that he would hear in his shop, um, and the, it's the sort of information that's not really available. Uh, we hear a lot about the, the the great and the good, but we don't hear very much about the person who's living their, a very ordinary day-to-day -day life. Does this ordinary man deserve a big exhibition like this? <laughs> well, partly because the information is available. Um, most households um, of the status that Henry was uh, would be dissipated and disappear. And what seems to have happened with Henry is that all the work that he wrote, much of it is still available together with things like clothing, uh, photographs, um, paperwork from the Victorian period, even down to schoolwork and his daughter's needlework. So again, you have, you have a visual record of what life was like and what they were doing. And now it's over to Dan Kemp for the sport. Thanks. Hull City took a two-goal lead at Newcastle United on Saturday, thanks to a spectacular strike apiece by Nikitsa Jelovic and Mohamed Diame. But the Magpies fought back, and two late goals by substitute Papi Cisse meant the Tigers took a point on the road. Scunthorpe United lost 2-1 against Leighton Orient at Glanford Park. Matt Sparrow scored the only goal for the Iron, who now sit 22nd in League One. Grimsby Town were the only one of our local sides to pick up a victory. They won 1-0 at Kidderminster Harriers, thanks to a research debut goal just a day into his loan spell from Barnsley and five minutes from time at Agbra. And North Ferriby United drew 2 all versus Barrow. Nathan Jarman and Danny Emerton each scored for the visitors, who are in eighth place in the Conference North. We only have Hull City in midweek football action. They travel to West Bromwich Albion in the Capital One Cup on Wednesday night for their first appearance in this, this season's competition. They enter at the third round stage due to their participation in the Europa League qualifiers earlier in the summer. Hull Kingston Rovers confirmed scrum half Travis Burns has signed for Super League rival St Helens from next season. The deal, worth £60,000, sees Burns join the Langtree Park outfit on a three-year contract. Holly Woodhead of Wheelsby Park Riding School has won an individual silver medal with a double clear round and has also taken home a team bronze medal. The eventer has taken the prize at the European Junior Riders Championships out in Portugal. A popular banking advert has raised the profile of walking football. The sport, which is coordinated by the East Riding FA, is the same as football, but with one obvious difference. It means those that may struggle to get up and down a football pitch can continue to play the game they love. The concept might seem a bit strange to some people, but reality, there's, there's nothing different to, to normal football apart from, apart from running or jogging, you're only allowed to walk. Um, everything else is played the same. Um, there's no different pitch markings or, or anything like that. The, bit, the only rule difference is you're not allowed to run. Through life, I was always football orientated. I played football for years. And you get to 50 and you think, oh, it's my football days are over kind of thing. I was out for a walk one day, I called in here, saw a leaflet and came along and I've been hooked ever since. I can't get enough of it. Olympic gold medalist Luke Campbell secured an eighth professional win against Paul Christoph Sott at Wembley Arena on Saturday evening. It was another impressive win for Campbell against an opponent who'd only lost twice prior to this weekend. Campbell now looks forward to Saturday the 25th of October when he fights Daniel Brizuela at the Hull Arena. And finally, the Hull Stingrays lost 3-2 against the reigning Elite League champions the Belfast Giants at the Hull Arena on Saturday night. Eric Galbraith and Carl Lozon netted in that one. The Rays now sit 7th in the league. Please remember to let us know about any sports stories in your area. Emma will let you know how to get in touch. And that is all for the sport. Thank you, Dan, for that. Now, if you have any stories, whether for news or sports, simply send us an email to news at estuary.tv or go via our Facebook or Twitter page or pick up the phone and call Grimsby 01472 315 561. Until tomorrow, goodbye.